Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to root your Nexus 6P on the latest MTC 19X running Android 6.01. Now this has been a very requested tutorial, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started right away. So first things first, what we wanna do on our phone is to enable OEM unlocking. I think that's what it's called. To do this, you're gonna to need to enable the developer options. And you can do this by tapping on the build number seven times. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. You can hit back once it says you're a developer, tap on developer options, and as you can see, OEM unlocking, you just need to turn that on. And then you can tap on enable, and that is done. So once you have that done, you wanna head over to your computer, of course. We're gonna download a few things here. But first off, we're gonna set up our, let's just say our workspace. I'm gonna make a new folder called Android. And this is where I'm gonna download everything that we have, or everything that we need. I also have most of these files already downloaded, but please bear with me while we go through the list of things that we need to download to make sure our phone, and so we can root our phone. So first things first, we're gonna need to get the Google USB drivers. So this will be probably one of the first links there. And we're gonna hit uh, download Google USB driver. We're gonna check this box and I agree. And we're gonna hit download. And of course, we're gonna save everything to our Android folder that we had. So just locate that again and hit save. And we're gonna download the files there. Next up we need is the Android Tools folder. And all this is, um, sorry, Android Tools zip file. All this is is the files that we need to actually communicate with our device, such as adb.exe, fastboot.exe, and the two DLLs that are required for this. So we can just dismiss that. You can see we already downloaded the USB drivers. And also you're gonna need the Android Tools folder. So once you've got those two downloaded, we're gonna need SuperSU. This is gonna download the latest one here. Just click on it. Uh, your version may change, it could be 2.77 next time we, uh, you do this, or whenever you do it. And just save it in the same position, of course, same location. And last thing we need to download is TWRP for our phone. Of course, we'll head over to this page, we're gonna scroll down a little bit. So this is our custom recovery, where we're going to download, sorry, where we're gonna flash to our device in replace of our stock recovery, and we're going to flash TWRP using that. So we're gonna click on the latest one here. The latest one is always at the top, I'm gonna click this nice big one down here. Not this one. We wanna download the image file and not the MD5 file. I see some people sometimes get a little bit confused about that. So we're gonna, again, save it to the same location. Start download. Uh, it doesn't matter that I had all these already downloaded, but that's fine. So we can close the web browser now. We won't be needing that anymore. And we'll just wait for this to finish so we can get it out of the way. And then we're gonna move onto our phone. So first things first, we're going to have to unlock the bootloader. Now we're gonna prepare a little folder here. So we're gonna open up the Android tool zip file. I'm gonna double click on it. And basically what we're gonna do is extract these four files out of, outside so it looks like this. So I'm just gonna, we can close this one now. And we also want to open up our drivers and just extract the USB driver underscore, underscore driver folder. And inside we have these INF files, cat, I forgot what that cabinet files, I think it was. But anyway, we have those USB drivers there. What we need to do to our phone now is to unlock the bootloader. So we're gonna go back to our phone and all we need to do is power it off. I recommend doing this with the cable unplugged so it doesn't turn on automatically or do go into some, the battery charger thing. And what we're gonna do is hold power and volume down together on the side there to get into the bootloader. Now this works if you if it's off or when it's on and all that, you just hold it until it gets into the screen and we're gonna plug it in. Now at this point, Windows can install the ADB drivers properly, but maybe not the fastboot drivers. So to check this, we are going to go into the device manager. So we head back over to our computer. We're going to right click on the start menu. If you're on Windows 7, you're gonna to have to right click on the, um, on the computer entry, like my computer in the start menu and click on manage and then click on device manager. But here on Windows 10, you can just go directly there. And we see this uh, Android device on, under other devices here that's unidentified and it has a little orange exclamation mark there. Now, this could vary per computer uh, and per operating system. You know, at least versions of Windows, it may not be Android. It could be something else. So find something that resembles your device. You can kind of test this out, test this out by unplugging your device. You can see it disappears. And when you plug it in, you can see something pop up, which is Android. 
So we can right click on that and we're going to click on update driver software. We're going to click on browse my computer driver software. We're going to hit browse again and we're going to browse for the folder. So that was in, whoops, this PC storage to Android USB driver and just the folder. No need to select AMD64 i386, just the USB driver underscore driver folder. Click OK and then hit next and that is going to install the driver software. We're just going to leave that checked and hit install and this will install the Android bootloader interface for our Nexus 6P and hopefully other Nexus phones that we do in the future. And as you can see, it's popped up here at the top and that means we are good to go. So right now, I'm gonna have both screens up here. We're gonna hold shift and right click on an empty space in our folder. We're gonna click on open command window here. Now this is just a quick way of changing the directory of the command prompt window to our to where we need it. So we can access fastboot.exe primarily. So what we need to do and when our phone's in this screen, uh, don't worry about what it says up here. As long as you're in this general screen, you'll be fine and that we've installed the drivers properly. What we're gonna do is unlock the bootloader. Now before we continue, and this is already a little bit late when you're in there. Well, not late at all, but it's a little bit further into the process. But if you have anything that you need to be back, that you need to have backed up, please do it now. So make sure it says start and press the power button to boot up your device again. That is if you need to back something up because unlocking the bootloader will do a factory reset that will erase all your photos, music, baby photos, anything that you have on your device that you haven't backed up, isn't saved somewhere, will be gone forever. So once you, I've got that out of the way, and once you've backed up your stuff, you can come back to this, the same screen, the same setup, and do what I'm doing right now. I don't have anything on this device, so we're gonna start right away. We're gonna type in fastboot, flashing, unlock. Just like that, and we're gonna hit enter, and you can see our screen has changed. But if we look closer, it will say, a custom OS is not subject to any, uh, well, testing, something, something like that. And it will do a factory reset, as it says down here. We're gonna press the power button as the yes is selected. The touchscreen doesn't work, so you're gonna have to use the power button and volume buttons. So make sure yes is highlighted and press the power button. You can see it says unlocking bootloader and unlocked. And if we head back, so now the bootloader is unlocked. Right. I might be talking a little bit fast, but that is just how I like to say things. But anyway, once your bootloader is unlocked, we wanna hit, actually, we could root right now. Let's try that. So we're gonna type in, actually, I think letting it boot up once is better than just going straight into it as it does do its factory reset. I don't wanna mess this up for anyone else or myself. So I'm gonna let our device boot and we're gonna copy over uh, one file. So now it is, there it is uh, erasing doing a factory reset there. Now I think it's done and it's gonna boot up. So just wait for your device to boot up normally. You, this time if you don't plan on flashing a custom ROM, you can go through the whole setup, uh, add your Google account, uh, you can even start downloading apps and all that. Um, and because after this initial unlocking of the bootloader, your phone pretty much won't go through another factory reset ever unless you choose to do so yourself. So I'll just wait uh, for the phone to turn on and I'll be back when it finishes. Alrighty, so we're finished here and our phone is booted back up. We can now copy over SuperSU. We can do this now or in TWRP, doesn't really matter, but we'll do it now. So if your device isn't being detected right now uh, with that little USB for charging or file transfers, just go ahead and unplug and replug in your phone and it should pop up right there. And you can see it on the computer as well. We're gonna tap on that use USB 4 and we're gonna change it to file transfers and what we're gonna do is open up the internal storage and we're gonna copy SuperSU over. So I'll just make this kind of side by side, or well, something like that, right? And we're gonna drag in this update SuperSU, uh, whatever version it may be, we're gonna drag it over. I'll just refer to it as SuperSU. As you can see, it's copied over quite quickly. And what we're gonna do is reboot back into the bootloader to flash TWRP and then flash SuperSU within TWRP. And we'll go over some, I guess, tips and tricks and all that. So again, all we need to do is power off our device and, or, and also unplug the USB, hold down the, well, both the power and volume down buttons to get back into the bootloader. So the camera's up at the top, so sometimes my hand blocks away. We can plug in our USB device, uh, sorry, USB again, and we're gonna head back to our computer. Using the same command prompt window, if you've closed it, don't worry, just open it up again, just like we did the first time. And we're gonna type in this command right here. We're gonna flash the TWRP image to our recovery partition. 
So we're gonna type in fast boot, we're gonna type in flash, we're gonna type in recovery, E-R-Y, we're gonna leave a little space on the end, just leave a space, and we're gonna drag in our TWRP image, which is right here, and we're gonna hit enter. Now, now that's done, we're gonna head back to our device here, and all we need to do is press the down volume down key until we see recovery mode up there. We're gonna press the power button, and we're gonna wait for our phone to boot into the recovery mode. Now this shouldn't take too long, it's rather quick. Well, it's a little bit longer than usual, but that's all right. And we'll wait for TWRP to boot up. Now here is the pattern, or it'll ask you to decrypt your data. Now I've had a few questions about this regarding, oh, what is it, please help me, what do I do, what do I put in it? Now this is very simple, all you need to do is put in your lock screen password. Well, it doesn't matter if you use a fingerprint or not, you'll still have set up a backup pin or a pattern or a password. Now this will detect on whether it's a pattern or a password or a pin, and it'll ask you to put in the uh, exact details there. So in this case, my pattern looks like that. Your pin could be 1234, or you may have a password called password 1234. So you're gonna type in your password there. Now our next prompt here is to keep system read only. Now this is kind of important for, I guess, OTAs and stuff. It, it, as you can see, it says it makes it a lot easier and it does warn you that installing zips uh, may still modify the partition as they can mount it and then mount it as write, read and write. So I'm gonna leave this as keep read only. You usually want a largely unmodified system for Android Pay to work, although you could probably install a few things there and it would still work well. Though I haven't used Android Pay personally, uh, we've only just recently got it in Australia and not all the major banks support it yet. So here we are at the TWRP recovery screen. I know it's a little bit bright, so if you'll allow me to quickly adjust this a little bit so you can see it um, better. Okay, so we're gonna press install and we're gonna scroll down. Now this is just the listings on the SD card. As you can see, our super SU zip is at the bottom. We'll tap on that and we'll swipe to confirm flash. Now with these more recent versions of super SU, they install the systemless version, which patches our boot image as well as installing SuperSU. Now, the process of this has improved a lot, actually. It's much faster and it's uh, a lot snappier. Now you can see the first reboot may take a few, uh, few minutes and a few times. Just leave it, don't force a uh, reboot or anything like that, and just hit reboot system. Now this is pretty much the gist of it. Now you can wait for your phone to turn all the way on and you should be rooted on the MTC 19X or whichever firmware is next, which is probably Android N, unless we have a, well, like one, more, one or two more months of security updates before that actually rolls out, uh, we'll have to see. So this process will take a few times. You'll probably have to enter your passcode, password, or pattern to, uh, if you have that setting enabled when your phone boots up and you're gonna see this screen maybe one or two times two times as well. So I'm gonna wait for this to boot up. As you can see, it's pretty quick. This is gonna ask us for our pattern. And it should ask us one more time. As you can see, this will force shut off in a second. Just like that, and it's gonna reboot. And this should be our final one. So you're gonna to have to do this, keep an eye on your device, and I'll see you on the other side. So as you can see, our device has booted back up very normally, and we're still on the MTC 19X, as I've showed you before, down at the bottom. Now that's just the keyboard downloading a few things, and we'll open up SuperSU. We're gonna say we're an expert, although we're really not, but I am, don't worry. Uh, as you can see, it works fine. Uh, if you'd like to see it in action, I mean, this is probably enough to prove that it works but I guess some people are skeptical and they like to see. But if it, you're happy with this, you can probably end the video right now. Thank you very much for watching. But if you'd like to stay a little bit longer for me to download an app to tell me I'm rooted, please feel free to stay. Root checker. I mean, I could grab something else. We'll use this one by Joey Krim. Very nice name. I agree. Yay, okay, that's nice. We're gonna verify root. Now this is much quicker. Anyway, now that is done. Which method? Of course, of course that one, bro. Cool, we don't need no advanced root checkers. 
we don't need advanced anything. Who cares? We are rooted and that is substantial evidence of it being so. So if you like these videos, if you find them helpful or useful, and if you have any criticism or comment, please feel free to leave them down below in the more info, uh, sorry not the more info, in the comments, because I'd like to take steps to improve any of this to make it easier for people of all skill, skill levels of doing these things and hopefully to make it more clear for people to follow as well. So if you have any suggestions for tutorials and stuff like that, please feel free to uh, leave them down in the comments. I will uh, you know, take note of it and maybe consider doing something like that in the future, though I can't make any promises, uh, especially with exams going on uh, very recent, or very soon, I should say. Well, thank you guys for watching, and of course, I'll talk to you in the next one.